not quite done with this lesson yet. Uh, I have another copy paste file here. <clears throat> Basically, as we talked about, the idea of keeping this DB set of employee records, this uh, user information and account details, uh, this is often very useful to a company because of the interrelationships between that employee and all kinds of other possible aspects of how the company works. I think I mentioned before that maybe only people with certain certifications can do certain things within the company. Now, you know, I'm not just talking about the roles in terms of the application itself, but, you know, maybe only certain employees uh, uh, are authorized to act as a, uh, uh, a team leader within the within the teams or a foreman on a job site, things like that, right? So that kind of information can be stored in relation to this employee entity and then maintained uh, within the system. And it could be used to do, you know, only present uh, authorized people in a drop down list of names to select to be uh, the uh, foreman at a job site, right? So that kind of information is very key and it fits very well into the same uh, entity set. So there are times then where we do need, although we already created a controller and views, those were special purpose ones just to allow the current logged in user to maintain their own account details. But there might be <clears throat> other aspects of the uh, employee, right, that the administrators might want to maintain in terms of, okay, what certifications, what kind of uh, actual job performance uh, tasks that they're authorized to perform and that kind of thing, right? <clears throat> so we are eventually most likely going to need another controller for the employee entity, one that allows administrator or somebody uh, with certain authorization to uh, maintain all of this other information. And at the same time, uh, we probably won't create or delete the employee accounts this way because we want them to have uh, their login as well. So the current flow we have will keep working. That's how we will register the new employee. And then, of course, all the details will be filled out and maintained afterwards, right? So we won't create and we won't delete employee accounts because usually what we'll do then is we'll mark them as inactive or, you know, set that Boolean active flag to uh, false. And that way we know that they aren't active in the company anymore, right? But we wouldn't likely delete them because we want to keep the history of any work that they've done, audit fields and so on right? <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, but what we might want to do is when we make them inactive, automatically, automatically remove their uh, login from the identity system. That way they can't log in anymore if we mark them inactive. Say, no, 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 you're not allowed in, right, to the system. So we can do all that from, you know, starting with just a standard employee controller, right? So that's what we're going to do next. So let's just go ahead back in. This is the same project we were just working on. And uh, we'll add a new controller. Second time we've done this for, <clears throat> pardon me, for our employee class. This time I'll let it just get called the employee's controller though, right? Now, in order to do that extra step we talked about of when we make this user inactive, we want to remove them from their from the identity system, right? Don't worry, if they get added back in, then the relationship between the email addresses across the great divide will still work, right? And we'll still know that this user uh, corresponds to this role as long as we use the same address. But my point is we need another context here, right? So I'm going to add a <clears throat> private variable to hold the application to be context as well, right? And before I forget, you know, in our scenario, I only have an admin role to do all this stuff. You might break it out into other roles, but for now, I'm just going to stick with my authorized attribute that you must be in an admin to work inside this controller, period. That's all there is to it. Now, of course, to get the application DB context in here, right, we have to add that to the uh, uh, injection here in the constructor. And of course, actually assign the private variable from the service we're injecting in. Okay, so now I have both contexts available, right? <clears throat> now we are going to have an index, but you know what? I'm not going to take time. You might eventually, and you probably would if you have a fairly large company, add sorting, filtering, paging, etc. to this index view. 
but I'm going to leave that entirely up to you. That's not the focus of this lesson. Been there, done that. We've done that before, right? Okay. So I'm going to focus on coming down to the uh, and the wait, 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 before I forget the create business gone, right? I could delete it or just comment it out, whichever you prefer. Actually, I'm just going to delete it because you can always recreate that scaffolded code with no problem whatsoever, right? So I'll just take that. We don't create. I do edit and we don't delete. So I'm going to take out all the delete stuff. Clean up the controller. Yay, there we go. Much, much smaller and easier to manage now. So we have an index and we have details. Am I going to use details? I'll leave it there just in case, but you know, maybe I'll comment it out. I don't see myself really using it at this point, but you might. Okay. So we have index and edit, and that's about it. All right. So uh, the edit get is probably fine for our purposes at this point, right? In the edit post, well, we know we have to do a few things, right? For one thing, of course, we should never do this. We should always use our try update model approach. But there is one other thing we're going to want to work with, that Boolean active, right? So when we get the ID of the employee, we're up updating here. Okay, we want to actually check the active flag that was in the view, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do down in here is, of course, change this approach. You know what? You know, this is just boilerplate stuff, so I'm going to take it all out and we'll put our own code in and just walk through it. Sorry, I know I say that a lot, but what can I what can I say? It's what I say. <laughs> okay, so let me get my code. Most of this is the standard changes we make when we switch over to do try update model, but not quite all of it, right? So first of all, we go, we get our employee to update, okay? We do have the ID, so we know which one to get, okay? And we can return not found if he's not there. That shouldn't be a problem. They should be there. Okay. So we're going to uh, check to see if you're making them inactive. So for that to be true, the employee to update the version stored in the database would be active. But we have unchecked that checkbox. So in the data being passed in here, active is now false. So if they are currently in the database is active, but we're about to make that false, then they're being made inactive, right? So we need a new method here. So I'll just maybe oh, generate the method and we'll get that in place in a second, right? So this is gonna delete them from the identity system. That's what the purpose of this is. After that, we carry on and we let it only update first name, last name, phone, favorite ice cream, and the active, right? We wouldn't want to let them change the primary key, of course, we never would, or the email address, right? That's just a no-go. I mean, that's how we track who people are in our system overall. Very important also in relation to the identity system, right? And then we just do the usual. We save changes, go back to the index, and away we go right? You can expand on this, add uh, whatever other error handling you might need or want, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just getting the basics of this new concept in place. So here's our delete identity user, right? So let's talk about what goes in there. <clears throat> uh, it should be a capital E on email there. I'm not sure why it isn't. Oh, well, that's okay. We'll just fix that. All right, so it's not implemented right now, but this is what I would do inside here. <clears throat> First of all, we have to go and get the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh yeah, it should have been an async task as well. Ah. That's what I get for letting it generate it. There we go, okay. We'll go and get the user to delete, right? So we go to our identity context users where the email matches and we just grab that. So this is like a straight old link query. We aren't using any fancy user managers or anything here. We're just doing a link query going into the actual ASP users table, right? Where the user's DB set lives and we're getting that user record. We checked that it's not null, right? 
because if they've already been removed once, we don't want to try to remove them again, okay? Uh, so we just skip over if that was the case. Job is already done. They're not there, right? <clears throat> if they are there, then we can call, okay, just a normal everyday remove on the DB set, passing in the user to delete. And then we just call save changes. So it's interesting. This is the first time seeing that, yeah, we can use the application DB context just like any other DB context to uh, basically manipulate records. It just We normally would resort, if that's the right word to use, resort to using a user manager if we're going to add people and so on because that looks after generating all the GUIDs and the encryptions and so on and so forth that are needed for uh, the different fields inside. But just to delete it, hey, no problem. We can just remove it using the actual context like any other DB context. And that takes care of it, right? So we call this and we remove the user from the security system. And at the same time, of course, right, we know we're only doing that because active is now false. So when we do our update here, it will set the user to being inactive or the active is false, right? And that does our, our job for us. Okay. So uh, let's come to our views then for this one. Okay, so again, I'm not gonna use this for any creation. I'm not gonna use it for any deletion. And I don't even see myself using details, but I'll leave it there for now. Okay, the edit though, right? Clearly we wanna do some work here and there's a bit to do on index, right? For one thing, because we don't create, let's, let's get rid of these unused links, okay? Uh, we don't need one for that. We don't need details or delete. So basically, we'll just leave edit and everything else is fine, right? We can show first name, last name, phone number, email, whether they're active or not. That's fine. We can leave the rest. Now, as I said, you probably would want to think about whether or not there's sorting, filtering, and paging required, but that's up to you. Okay, so let's come back. That's good for index. Let's just come to the edit page or edit view, I should say. All right, some things we definitely want to change here. Okay, <clears throat> I might say edit account. Well, you know what? Yeah, we'll walk through it. So I'm just going to change the top section. Again, just to make things a little bit more clear as far as I'm concerned. So edit account, account details for, hey, we have the whole model, so we can as well show the full name. And I'm going to show the email right behind it, right? So here are all the details. Uh, once, once again, this just bugs the Dickens out of me. I'm going to wrap the form around the whole data structure here. And of course, we'll move our summary up, just like I always do. OK. All right. Now, something I should maybe talk about, it is actually a design decision. I can't say right or wrong. You might have already decided that, well, no, we already have that whole system where the user can go in and maintain their own account details, right? So why should I even let an administrator, they shouldn't be able to change any of this, first name, last name, phone number, right? That's looked after by the user themselves. If that's the case, I have no problem with that, right? You can either make these inputs read only, right? That would be one way around it. Um, or if you want, just don't even uh, have them as inputs. Just use labels for everything to show all this. Even use a description list layout like we'd normally do on a details page. That's entirely up to you. It could very well be, and certainly the email we wouldn't want, right? So that's something I would definitely take out, okay? Um, is the email so we would probably have that in here as a uh, hidden okay uh, right in here as well there we go so we take the email out of the equation but you know we do want to allow them to change the active right if you want to let them change any of this that's up to you and of course in that scenario i talked about where this might be used as well to uh, relate them to different uh, uh, job functions that they're authorized to carry out, right? Nothing to do with the application here, just in the real world, whether they're allowed to act in certain uh, capacities and so on. That could all be incorporated into this edit process as well. But I'm going to leave these open. So in theory, you know, the administrator could, uh, you know, change something about the last name, even though they probably should leave that to the end user themselves. That's that's your decision as the uh, uh, 
uh, God in this case, right? Okay, the one thing I might do is you might just give a bit of a explanation, almost I would say, almost like a uh, um, a warning, okay, here in terms of the changing of the active status. So right underneath this label, I'm just going to throw it. <coughs> Pardon me, a bit of code. I had really salty bacon at lunch, and it's just <laughs> anyway. All right, so if active is true. Right. Currently, then I want to give a nice warning that if you make the user inactive, their login to the system will also be removed. And if you ever want to add them back in, you must register their account again with the same email address. Right. Else. OK. If you make the user active, then you must also register their login again. Right. So that just kind of explains what to expect out of the whole thing. And of course, yeah, we can go back to the uh, um, email account list or employee account list. Yeah. And away we go. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay. So that's basically the changes we need. Again, you know, whether or not you make these editable is entirely up to you. We have it set up in the controller that in theory, at least for now, you could edit those limited quantity of things. The active, you definitely want to be able to limit. All right. Last but not least, we want to be able to navigate to this. Okay. And again, this would be an administrator only thing. So maybe I'll just throw it right in here and it'll just be another uh, selection to uh, uh, choose to manage employee accounts. And we'll give her a try. Oh, that's salty bacon. I keep coughing. Okay, so we'll log in as admin, right? Now we can manage email accounts. So I oh, there's only one profile here. Uh, let me uh, let me just log out and log in as somebody else, like uh, user one, for example. See, I immediately get directed to complete the account details for user one. Uh, this is Joe Smith. No phone, uh, vanilla. Oh, vanilla bean. That's a good one. Okay, so there's Joe. All right, so at least I got a couple of accounts now. You can manage details however you want. We'll just log out and I'll log back in as administrator. So now when I come in, right, until they actually complete a profile, you don't get data here, right? So in theory, I could come to Joe Smith, okay, edit him, right? And, you know, in theory, I could change that from vanilla bean, uh, uh, I don't know. Is there such a thing as red vanilla bean? <laughs> Who knows? But more importantly, active. Warning, right? There we go. I'm going to uncheck that. Save. Now, you see, he's still here, right? But he's no longer active. But if we log out... If I log in again as user one, <laughs> invalid login attempt. So I'm locked out of the system because I'm not active. And we accomplish that by simply removing them, right, from the actual identity system. They're still here. Right, and any uh, information I have about him, about uh, records he's changed in the system that have been tracked by the audit fields or anything else, it all is in place, right? But he can no longer log in if I'm going to, you know, have a listing here, a filter on all the employees. I could filter for those who are active or inactive quite easily and so on and so forth, right? So that's a very nice way to kind of tie that together. Again, this quite often in the real world is expanded upon to give all kinds of other uh, related properties about employees and things like that. Uh, but that's entirely up to you. I'm just giving you a starting point. Uh, one thing I'll maybe mention, ooh, wouldn't it be neat if you added the ability that if you edit this record and make him active again, see right now it says, if you make him active, you must also register their login again using the same email, right? 
So the system now thinks he's active, but he still can't log in. You would actually have to go in, do the register user, add user one again. Surprise, he's not on the list. User one, right? Give him a password, password. <clears throat> now, okay, success, right? So if I log out, now I should be able to log in as user one. And there we go. So I'm back and see it even remembered. My name is Joe Smith. Okay. So it pulled that from that existing employee record. So we showed that you can actually make them inactive. It removes the account from identity. Making them active isn't enough. You also actually have to register them again. But once you do, it all meshes together. It all relates back automatically. All the details and history you have for this old employee who's been rehired. Yay, he was only laid off for like two minutes. But anyway, he's been rehired and he's back and everything relates once again. So just a thought, why not make it so that uh, when you make him active again, that you don't have to do the second step, right? It's an administrator doing this, so why not also register him? There you go. This is a challenge for you to do that. But I'm going to let you do that all on your own. Oh, yes, on your own.